Hi, this is Noma Dimitri from the Alpine Garden, and we're here in front of a daffodil be bed in the garden. And here you can see the little daffodils, you're familiar with them. They're one of the harbingers of spring, one of the first bulbs to ever come out every spring. Um, they're easy to take care of and lovely to look at, and they're sprightly, they're reliable, and they come out even when there's snow in the ground. There is a point, however, when they start becoming spent. This one is still a good one, as you can see here, but this one, for example, is starting to show its age, and this one is absolutely done. Um, you've heard of the expression, gone to seed? It's an interesting expression. Um, presumably, we like seed, uh, and but when we use the expression, gone to seed, we we mean that something is done it's over its its lifespan it's useful it's admirable lifespan we use that about an old rocker or an old singer or an actor that we no longer like that's no longer in fa in, in fashion we say they're gone they've gone to seed um, this means no longer at their peak really uh, past their prime um, why do we say that? Well, it's a, it's a word that takes, it's an expression that takes its, uh, uh, its base from agriculture because when something goes to seed, it means it's pretty much past its peak. And that is definitely the case with flowers and especially this little daffodil. This daffodil, this daffodil here, has still not yet gone to seed. That means that it is still interested in being fresh looking and beautiful because it has not yet been fertilized by an insect. Um, so it's waiting there, uh, sending, broadcasting its existence uh, in beautiful colors so that an insect will come and pollinate it. As soon as that is done, however, um, that means that the genetic material has been reshuffled in one way or another through the wind, through an insect or whatever it is, and the flower is no longer important. This is why the flower will die, but on the other hand, the reason for the flower, which is the production of seed, the production of children, the production of fruit, whatever way you want to think of it, uh, can now take place. Um, so what is certainly um, what is certainly no longer necessary is the flower, and that's why we get this particular ugly-looking daffodil. On the other hand, if you look carefully, the the base of this flower, the the place where the stem meets the flower, there's a little olive-sized little um, uh, bump, uh, which is going to get bigger and bigger. Uh, as time goes by and as this falls off and this little bump is the fruit now we think of fruit as apples and oranges uh, but we don't think that most plants actually make some sort of fruit and this some sort of fruit is what holds the famous seed inside and the seed is the child the thing that's gonna go and fly away somewhere else and create a new plant um, so in the case of our beloved daffodils, um, unlike in the case of, say, wheat, where we want the seed because we're going to use it to make flour and then bread, in the case of daffodils, where we don't give a damn about these seeds, we actually want to get rid of this. Why? Because the production of seed, like the production of any kind of child, is very expensive for every creature. So this little thing, the the the... the augmentation of this fruit, of this seed, uh, is going to take a lot of energy out of the remaining plant. Um, and so what we want to do, and we don't want this energy to go to this useless thing, this particular seed. So what we want to do is get rid of it and stop it. Uh, stop the energy from going to the seed and to the fruit and have this energy go to the productive parts of the plant, which includes the roots and the leaves. Um, and in the case of a plant like a bulb, like these daffodils, um, the most important thing is that all the nutrients that are captured above ground are channeled below ground to the bulb, 
uh, so that it becomes big and fat and it can survive the long winter underground and then come back again beautifully like this next year. In order to do this, therefore, to cancel this expensive and useless seed and have the plant prosper, we do something called deadheading. Deadheading means we kill the head of the plant uh, by cutting it off. It's a very simple thing. You'll hear people talk, tell you all the time, have you deadheaded your tulips? Have you deadheaded your daffodils? Don't forget to deadhead them. Otherwise, you're going to exhaust them. You must deadhead them. So what does it mean to deadhead? To deadhead simply means is that you cut, you take a little scissors and you cut just below this particular olive. You want to get rid of this olive, but you don't want to get rid of any of the stems. So don't go down cutting down here because this is all useful um, part of the plant. It photosynthesizes and it is food for the plant. The thing you want to cancel is the fruit. You don't want fruit. You just snip it off. Tuck. You've just deadheaded this particular daffodil. That's all it actually takes. Um, so you go, so every day when you go around looking at your flowers, uh, you see the ones that are kind of getting spent and you get rid of them. They will be spent um, at different rates. They will not all be ready for that heading at the same time because some of them will be approached by bees a little faster or a little earlier. Chance plays a big role and therefore they will look good like this one while other ones perhaps the ones that came up a little bit earlier have been pollinated and they can be deadheaded. So that's the way you play this. Now, what's going to happen with the rest of the plant? Here is one that I've deadheaded yesterday. Okay, so we see this particular little part where I cut off and then you see the little leaves. These are the little leaves of the daffodil. So this particular thing now is going to continue living uh, it's not going to make any children, so it's going to be very selfish. It's going to concentrate all its, all the sunlight that it receives and all the nutrients that it receives and all the water it receives. It'll just go for the plant itself. Uh, what they will do is they will, all these nutrients will be channeled down, all these pro products of photosynthesis, the sugars, will be channeled down the plant and to the bulb underground. Uh, and there will be a point where this bulb will have enough, it will have reached its max. Uh, it will be sated um, with energy from the sun. And at that point, this stem and the leaves, this little stem that we see here, and the t three or four leaves of the poor daffodil will no longer be necessary. At that point, they will dry out completely. Um, when they dry out completely, they will look like a completely faded, dead piece of plant like you used to seeing wherever you look. I'll show you a completely dead piece of plant. This is a completely dead piece of plant. It's not green at all anymore. It's just gone. <laughs> so when you get when you get to that level, and only then, are you allowed to go to the base of this daffodil, which is somewhere right over here, and snip it off right on the base. But only then, if you do that earlier, you will not have good daffodils next year. Okay. Um, now, another, now we, we've covered our, our basic topic, which is deadheading your daffodils. Now, this begs another problem, however, that every gardener has to deal with. So, you have this little tiny bed of daffodils that we have here, okay? And now we're towards the end of their uh, lifespan. So, in the next kind of week, I will end up deadheading all of them. So, there will be no daffodils left here at all. They will just be these green leaves and stems that don't look so bad, but they will increasingly get drier and uglier and not interesting to look at. So what is a poor gardener, what can a poor gardener do about this particular problem? Because I don't want this bed um, in the middle of the garden to be looking like a dried bunch of sticks um, <laughs> until the mid to late June when the whole thing will be done and I can cut it all off. So what do I do? One trick that you do is you layer bulbs. That means that at the same place where you plant your daffodil, you plant something else that you know in advance, and you know these kind of things, you can read these kind of things, you can research them, or you can talk to your local garden center. You um, 
you plant next to the daffodils another bulb that you know in advance will flower after the daffodil. That means that as our little daffodils are dying off and I'm deadheading them, these guys are now coming through, these lovely little blue bell, uh, these lovely little bells, white bells, I don't know what they're called. So here they are, there's one here and there's another one here. So as we lose these, we get these. Uh, and that's a nice thing. And you can do that um, non-stop you can put more another one that will flower after this and after this so you can have actually in this particular little patch you can have flowers coming from march all the way to october if you want uh, all you do is you have to study which bulbs will open at what time in your particular area a last thing that you can do is you can plant something else, a perennial plant, let's say, something with a nice leaf, uh, something that is kind of bushy, that will kind of, as spring progresses and these guys, these bulbs start dying out and being deadheaded and looking ugly, something else buried here will kind of take this place and will grow up and hide the ugliness. And maybe this something else will also have its own flowers and it will not be a bulb and it will last easily the whole summer. So what I have done here is I have done exactly that and we're going to look at it. It's a little low still because again the point is it shouldn't be high when the daffodils are coming out otherwise you wouldn't be able to see the daffodils. It should be timed so that as the daffodils and these little white bells, these guys, start dying out, this other thing that you now don't see takes their place, bushes up and takes their place. So here is this other thing um, and I'm going to try to show you. Can you see it? Yes, you can see it. So this is the other thing. It's this leaf with this very lovely variation. It's kind of red and yellow. It's the kind of thing that colorblind people cannot see and they're totally frustrated. Um, so this little thing is growing up here and if you can see it's already starting to make these. It's already starting to make its little flowers. At this point they're still half the height of the daffodils but they will come up, they will pick up and they will dominate this at some some point in June when everything else is ugly. So we've learned today two things basically why and how to deadhead our daffodils and in fact this applies to all other bulbs as well. I have another video on tulips um, and how to layer a bed so that you have continuous flowers and, and in your effort to make it look pretty year-round. Um, which is the basic effort in the Four Season Garden that we try to have here. Uh, so we've learned these two things. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye.